Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, hopping in with a super exciting announcement. Squarespace has just announced their brand new membership areas feature is available. I had the honor of beta testing it for them earlier this year, moving my entire course on custom code for Squarespace from Kajabi over to Squarespace itself. Now, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty rad and oh so customizable. So I wrote up some quick aids to common cues and made a simple step-by-step -step rundown for anyone ready to get started. You can check out all of this written down on my blog at insidethesquare.co forward slash member areas. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash member areas. But right here, right now, I'll give you a quick rundown about the 10 steps that I've created in this video, okay? So first up, let's answer some questions. What are these member areas? It's basically a folder of content on your site that can only be accessed when someone signs up to become a member. Now this can be accessed for free. You can set up one-time payments, you can charge weekly, every two weeks, monthly, every two months, all kinds of options there. I set this up myself to collect payments through Stripe, which was already enabled on my account, but I think they have a few other options that you can look into. So now if you have a ton of content on another membership platform right now, and you know that you want to move it all over, you've got a bunch of stuff that you want to export and import into Squarespace, let me be 100% clear here, I have no idea how you would do that. Seriously, no clue. I didn't move over any Kajabi data when I moved the switch, I just moved over content. So reach out to Squarespace support and see what they have to say about it, okay? But if you're brand new to this and you wanna make a new membership site on your Squarespace platform, I broke down this process into 10 simple steps, so let's go through them together right now, okay? All right, again, this is all on my blog, insidethesquare.co forward slash member areas, but here we go. All right, step number one, make an outline. What content do you want on what pages? I'm not talking about bullet points here. I'm talking about really specific stuff. Are you going to be offering a series of PDFs? Will you be taking people through a training or is it just one page that is gonna have every single image that they could wanna access? Where are those images? Are they on a Google Drive folder? Are they on your computer? I want you to make an outline and write all of this down. Get super clear on what's going where. When I made this outline, I realized for my membership area in customcodeacademy.com, I was going to create a portfolio because portfolios have pagination at the bottom. So if someone started on module one, once they got all the way through all those lessons, they could see a button on the bottom that said module two is this way, an easy way for them to stay on track and work their way through the course. So consider a portfolio, maybe a blog is better for yours, or even an event section, or just individual pages. I want you to be very specific and create an outline with all the content that you're gonna want people to have access to once they're members. All right, step number two, actually create the content. This is one of the cool parts about the membership areas inside Squarespace here. What you can do in the not linked section of your site is make a folder and inside that folder, put all of the content exactly how you want it to be in your membership areas in a page that's password protected or a portfolio that's password protected. Definitely enable some kind of security. You don't want people seeing this magic before it's done, but you can create all of this content in a folder in the not linked section of your website. And then when you're ready, it's gonna be another step further on down the line here. We're just gonna drag that content into your new members area. It's really that easy. So step number two, create your content. All right, step number three, customize it with some CSS. Go on now, you saw that one coming, right? Couldn't help myself. But seriously, update the look of your content in there with some custom code. Explore color themes for different sections, uh, fancy fonts, or even just update the look of those images so that they're less boring. Find ways to customize the membership area of your site because it's in Squarespace. It's super customizable. If you don't already have my CSS cheat sheet, I've got a bunch of codes and pro tips in there that you can use. It'll really save you some time while you're getting together all of this content for your members because it'll all be in one place. So grab a copy if you don't have one already at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. So that's step three, customize the heck out of it so it looks amazing, okay? Step four, time to enable the members area. 
You've written out your content, you've created it all, you've made it look awesome. Now we need to enable the members area so you can drag it on up there, okay? So under your settings menu, I've got a little gif right here for you. Navigate to members area and toggle that on, all right? Now once you've done that, you can actually create a members area. Go back to your pages menu, we're on to step five here, okay? Step five, you're gonna see a new section called member areas. Click on that plus sign to create one. Here you're gonna give it a name that'll be visible to your members and then set up what you want to charge for access. Now, yes, let me answer your question right now. You can change that amount after you create it. So if you're not 100% sure about your pricing yet or you might wanna change it three months down the line, that's okay. Keep creating and just remember to fix that before you launch, okay? All right, step number six, we're gonna move over all that content that you already made. Inside your pages menu, you can just drag that content up into the new members area that you just created. Now remember, it's like a big old folder of goodies that only members can access, so arrange it in a way that makes sense for the new members for your site. If you're using 7.1 like I do, they're going to see this as a drop down folder in their navigation. So make sure that those portfolios, pages, links, whatever you've got in there, put it in an order that makes sense, okay? All right, step seven, decide on your settings. I prefer to use a different menu in my members area because it helps my students stay on track and stay focused with the content inside my course and not on the rest of the site. However, you might have a completely different business model than I do. So take a look at the different settings that are available inside those member areas, okay? All right, step number eight, pick the plan that works for your budget. You can pay monthly or annually, and I believe they have three different levels at the time of recording this when they just launch member areas. Now, I do wanna mention something. I only needed one membership section in customcodeacademy.com, but I did the math. Paying a 7% transaction fee for one student would be an extra $14.37 versus the 4% transaction fee in the next price tier. The difference in price was only $10 a month. So as long as I get at least one student a month, it pays for itself. So you might not need to go with the very basic plan. It might be more cost effective to pay for something with a lower transaction fee. Now this isn't budgeting advice or business advice by any means, but I think it helps to do a little bit of math because I think I just saved myself a bundle sitting back and calculating that before I clicked which plan I was actually going for. All right, step nine, we're almost at the end here. Free, weekly, monthly, one time, whatever it is, set up the price for your membership area. Now, if you don't have commerce set up on your Squarespace site, make sure you link your Stripe account or whatever payment processor you're deciding to use before you launch, okay? Dot those I's, cross those T's, make sure that people can actually pay you once you set the price for your membership area, okay? Again, I used Stripe because it was already integrated with the Squarespace site that I had going at the time, so just double check and make sure you have a way to actually collect payments from your members, okay? Step number 10, final step, add a membership signup block to a page on your site. You can add a join or enroll button to any page on your site using a content block called member signup. So once you create this content block, you can choose to display the title, the description, the price, and of course, the join button. Inside that block, you can customize the text and you can customize the alignment right there in the block itself. Put that on a page and select save and people will be able to enroll in your brand new members area. How awesome is that? Now that was 10 specific steps that we went through, a really simplified broken down version of creating this on your own site. It's a brand new feature, so I'm sure more changes will be coming. And as far as custom CSS goes, I'll definitely be adding a few tutorials to help you style the look of your members area on my YouTube channel pretty soon. So that's it for my super high level 10 steps to setting up a membership area inside your Squarespace website. Now there is a bonus step I wanna mention as well. After you've created it and you've launched it to the World Wide Web, I want you to share it with me. I wanna see what you've done. Tell me about your experience when you created this membership area, what you loved about it, what you loathed about it. I wanna hear your feedback. Send an email to hello at insidethesquare.co and fill me in on how it all went. Now again, all of these steps I've outlined on a page on my website, insidethesquare.co forward slash member areas. So head on over there if you want this rundown again in just a visual format. A link is in the description beneath this video as well, okay? 
Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.